You are looking specifically at a mutation that's involved with the oestrogen receptor uh, modulation. Tell me what it is, and what is the big issue that you were trying to focus in on here? So um, estrogen is a key driver of breast cancers. We've known that for more than a century. Uh, what we were trying to understand is how is it that cancers start to grow despite us lowering estrogen levels. And what we found was that there were mutations in the estrogen receptor that made the receptor active even without estrogen present. Our clinical questions were, how often do we see these mutations? And secondly, if a patient has these, how do they do? What are their outcomes? Right, now this is the ESR mutations that you're talking about, That's and right. there's more than one of them. There are s several mutations. There are two that are particularly most common. So what did you do in the study that you've now reported here in San Antonio? So what we did was we took uh, samples from patients on a large clinical trial, the Bolero II clinical trial, all of, wh all of whom had estrogen receptor positive metastatic breast cancer. We took samples from them and asked, is there a mutation present? Uh, in this case, we used plasma, something called cell-free DNA, DNA that's shed from the tumor into the bloodstream to look for mutations, rather than looking at um, like a tumor biopsy like is often done. And uh, we looked for those two common mutations, and we asked if you had a mutation, how did you do? If not, how did you do? What did you find? So we found that the uh, mutations were actually quite common, 30% uh, of the patients had one of these mutations, and we found that the patients who had mutations uh, didn't live as long as those who did not have the mutation. Now, these were affecting the way the aromatase inhibitor works on that tumor then? It, it's a little bit um, hard to narrow it down exactly to how the aromatase inhibitor worked. Um, it's clear from the data that in the lab that the mutations prevent the cancer from needing estrogen. So you would think that's related to the aromatase inhibitor. In the clinic, we just know that the, they li didn't live as long, and we deduce that it, those are linked, but we don't actually prove it by the study. Right, so your, your findings were precisely what? That the mutations meant a, a negative effect on, on overall survival? That's right, that there was a negative effect on overall survival, and uh, and that's consistent with the idea that um, they are so-called resistant to further aromatase inhibitor. And everything in the lab would tell us that's the case. But I want to be cautious. The clinical data that we precisely looked at uh, couldn't definitively answer that question. Now, these patients had all had aromatase inhibitor therapy. That's Did right. they have these mutations on initial biopsy? Um, so we didn't do a longitudinal study where we looked at pre-treatment and on treatment to precisely answer that. In general, we, when we and others have looked for these mutations, they have nearly always been associated with prior exposure to aromatase inhibitor. Uh, all of the other studies that have been done in the untreated setting haven't seen these mutations. Now maybe if you um, do some really sophisticated technology, you can find the needle in the haystack. but. So far, people haven't found them there. So does this look as though uh, AI treatment is helping the environment for these mutations to flourish? AI environment is selecting for these mutations to emerge um, when they do. I would be cautious in just saying that for many, many women, the aromatase inhibitor is curing their cancer, treating their disease effectively. It's just when we look in hindsight at those in whom the cancer did come back, we're finding the, these mutations. Now, what impact did these mutations have on the use of other therapies? Yeah, so that's um, a very speculative part of our study. We looked at the outcomes of patients who went on to the um, Everolimus treatment, uh, and we did see that one of the mutations benefited from the addition of Everolimus the more common mutation, um, just as much as those who didn't have the mutation. One other mutation, it didn't seem to have as much of a benefit in those patients. 
but we're very cautious. That was um, just sort of almost speculative work on a small subset of patients. But what, we need to validate that, I think. What could be the main clinical implications as we stand right now? I think there are a couple of clinical implications. First, um, a, lot of a lot of people are sending their patients for genomic testing to look for new therapies for clinical trials. Um, this study would suggest that if you're looking for a trial that's going after these mutations, plasma is probably a good source to get it from. Often clinical trials are, are taking archival old tumor specimens and looking for mutations. Our study would suggest a blood test done right at the time of, of interest in some, say, a new study is, is maybe the way to go. It's um, very sensitive and easy to get and seems to pick up these alterations. So that's one major, I think one major implication because there are large studies looking at drugs specifically against these mutations. Okay, so practically how might doctors be capable potentially of using this new information? I think that for right now there are no FDA approved uh, genomic tests for breast cancer. Um, when I say genomic, sequencing based tests yet because none of the therapies, but they are coming. There are therapies that are, I think are, are, you know, right there in phase three that are being looked at. Um, so I think that for right now, it's, it's mainly going to be in a investigational setting. Um, there are, a, there are studies, there are actually um, uh, products out there that you could obtain um, today. You could submit your plasma sample and get an analysis. Um, but it's not been fully validated, so we're cautious about recommending them. Nevertheless, it's disturbing for doctors to know that uh, there are factors impeding the benefits of the anti-estrogen therapies they're giving, however beneficial those are initially. Um, in a nutshell, what should doctors be remembering about all of this from the evidence you've got so far? I think what doctors can remember, first of all, is that most patients are benefiting from these therapies. But we all know, all of us who are treating these patients, that some of our patients uh, quickly come off of the, these therapies. Um, and I think those are patients who we should be thinking about um, clinical trials for. And if we can obtain these kinds of mutational analysis, we can put them, I think, on the right trials and hopefully develop more targeted therapies. Mm -hmm.